morning. So we have traveled from Chatfield, Minnesota down to Waterloo, Iowa to visit more family and friends. And right now we are out on the Cedar River uh, here at this amphitheater. And you might hear of some construction off in the background. Uh, they're replacing a bridge there. But this is my favorite spot in all of Waterloo. They have concerts here and events and I think it's just beautiful to be down here on a uh, sunny summer morning. And so over the next two devotionals, I'm going to do those from right here. Now, I want to show you a picture that I took a few days ago in Chatfield, Minnesota. And this is a 1970 Ford Bronco that was just sitting in a parking lot there. And it was obvious that the owner was trying to sell it. But this is a beautiful vehicle. This 1970 Bronco was restored to new light condition. And I wish I had some other pictures to show, you know, like the pinstriping. There was a lot of attention to detail. Um, I think we can say that this is the work of a master craftsman who put his blood, sweat, and tears into this vehicle. And I mean, this is a collector's item. Uh, if I had the money, I would buy this vehicle and I would drive this every day. And every day would be a happy day driving that vehicle. And seeing this Bronco in new light condition, it reminded me of Romans chapter 12, verse 2, which says this. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. You know, the focus of this verse is on this word transformed. And transformed is the word metamorpho. It's where we get the word metamorphosis. And when we think of metamorphosis, we think instantly of a caterpillar being transformed or changed into a butterfly. And that's really remarkable because these two, um, it's the same creature, but it seems like two different insects, doesn't it? It's a completely different change that occurs in this transformation. And what happens with us when we come to Christ? When we come to tr salvation, God transforms us. He makes us into something completely different different. And I know that might be confusing because, you know, some might say, well, I still look the same. I still have the same personality. So how does that occur? Well, this is a spiritual change. And we see that change in the way we live. And the way we live is something beautiful. I mean, God uh, brings us to salvation in Christ. And so we're following the model of Christ. And then he uh, gives us the Holy Spirit who dwells within us. And uh, the way we live and uh, our perspective is, in life is something very beautiful, just like that Ford Bronco. We are the work of a master craftsman who we know to be God. Well, how does he do that? We get some things here of how he does it. And the first thing that pops out is this word conformity, conform to the world. We're not to be conformed to the world. And let's face it, our world is driven by sin and wickedness. And there's lots of temptations out there to um, get us to sin, to feed that our sin nature. And... You know, this is one of the things that God does with us, is that he breaks that sin nature when we come to Christ. Now, let's be real. We still sin, but the desire to only sin and to feed our lust for sin, that is broken. And something else occurs. We desire to please God. And so, you know, instead of just chasing after every whim and desire that can lead us into wickedness, we are looking for ways to please God in the way we live. Now, another thing that comes out here is the renewal of your mind. 
And that's really key here in this passage. Let's face it, we don't think the same way. We can't think the same way. No longer are we just seeking to feed our sin desire. We are seeking through our mind to please God. And you know, when we are faced with things in our world, we will take that, we'll weigh it against what the scriptures say, and it's like, that's contrary to God's truth. And so I need to get rid of it. You know, we are in a state today where our culture is throwing lots of things out at us. There's lots of uh, cultural agendas, social agendas that we're being told, you must accept this. You must practice this. And when we examine those social, cultural trends or agendas, they are contrary to God's word. And so I can see where Christians are being duped every day and Christians are being led astray every day through these, these things. And so by the renewal of our mind and by capturing God's truth in his word, we say, no, I don't let culture dominate me. I let God and his truth dictate what I do or what I believe or how I live. Well, there's another thing here that is said, and that is uh, being given God's will. You know, when our minds are renewed and we're not conforming to the world, we are in a place where we can determine God's will much better. You know, God can direct us through those situations that are a bit confusing or difficult, but another way of looking at God's will is that we're on a road we're living out God's purpose for us in our lives. And oftentimes that is impacting others. God's given us lots of gifts and talents to impact our world. Sometimes we forget that. Um, this too is part of God's will. Well, the question then is, how are we living today? Are we living as transformed people or has our lives been a bit muddied lately? If we liken ourselves to that Ford Bronco, you know, are there mud on our tires? Is there a few dings um, on the sides of our Bronco? Or are we shining? Are we showing Jesus to the world? And you know, when we are uh, living out Jesus' model of the way he lived, man, we shine. We are just like that brand new, sparkling 1970 Ford Bronco. And so maybe this is a point to just inspect your life and to see where maybe you've been led astray or maybe the sin has crept into your life and maybe it's time for some change and to be restored with God's holiness and righteousness. Today, live out Christ. That's really what it means to be transformed. God bless you.